anybody, anybody in the room. What you want to do is you still want to, you know, I want to bring you in for an audition. You know, and you bring them in for an audition, let them audition for the world, uh, for the part. Because sometimes what happens is that if you just give the person a role, and I know, I know this from experience, right? If you just give the person a role and they don't audition, they take it for granted. And they think that you need them and instead of looking at this as a partnership that we need each other. Like, you know, so you have you may have problems with that person on set because they think that they're the star. You know what I'm saying? And so it's all about that going to different plays, just going out to different networking events, uh, just look at, you know, whatever is you know, social media. Uh, go on YouTube and look at the different. Another thing too is that if you go on YouTube, if you look at the different successful webisodes that are doing really big, some of them like millions of millions of views, just reach out to some of these people in these webisodes. You know, uh, reach out to people who, who are who, uh, have major uh, uh, social media followers. A lot of them want to. Not a lot. I would say all of them want to be in movies. You know what I'm saying? So it just, they just wait for the opportunity. You can be the opportunity. We can be the opportunity. Does that? Uh, yeah. I also had a question about like your networking for, I suppose, financing. Like, how did you fund those small budget films? Did you fund them yourself or? Right. So the, 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 the low budget films, what we did was I put up money, and I had my cousins to put up money, and I had my friends to put up money. <laughs> you know, I worked at, I was working when I did. The first film, I was working at a, at a furniture store, and so we would get, you know, we were making really good money. You know, I mean, I was making like really good money at this furniture store, and everybody was making good money. And what I would do, I'd make this film for again, it was like a thousand dollars. So when I, I I hit the screenplay, so I went to the people who I really I was really cool with at this furniture store. I said, look, man, I need this amount of money so I can make this film. And they, you know, and they were like, okay, payday. They gave me the money because they wanted to see, you know, you know, they wanted, they saw a person that, you know, that was going after something. They wanted to be a part of that, you know. And then it's, it's interesting because this one lady is that when we sold the film, you know, we sold the film. I went back to her to give her money back. I was like, look, thank you for your investment. What, what, what they returned? She wouldn't even take it. You're like, no, I'm not taking that. I'm like, no, no, this she said. And she wouldn't even take it. She was like, look. I see that you wanted to do something, and people will respond to that when they see that you really want to do something. And, and, and they, they would, people want to help. They, you, and you will find out. They just want to help. What was your transition like from going self funded to like searching for funding? Woo, okay, so the difference between going from self funding your film to having somebody else fund your film is that was hard for me <laughs> because. I was so used to being in control, like, you know, of the sad say. I was so used to being in control of hiring the actors that I wanted to hire and things like that. And so I was, for Black Coffee, it was something that, uh, that because, you know, I, I brought in the package deal, you know, and I had these actors. But even with that, is that, I mean, and I love that because I have a great relationship with the actors from Black Coffee, but the thing is, is that, I wouldn't have never gotten a deal had those actors never signed up. And so after we did Black Coffee, we did My First Love. So uh, when My First Love, I worked with Gabriel again as before. So I'm like, look, Gabriel, I sent her the screenplay, she signed on. And when she signed on, I told my, the production uh, the production company at the time, and it was a deal we had with uh, BT. And once I said, okay, I want to do this next film, which is My First Love, I have people in it. And, and we're like, okay, you got your okay, business, that's cool, but we're going to do the rest of the cast. I'm like, wait, <laughs> but you lose a lot of control, you know. But when somebody else is financing, you know, your project, you know, like, it's so much that you lose. Uh, and then, you know, the thing is the producers like to make it think, you know, when they're, because they know they're the, they're the money people. So when we don't say they make, want to make it feel like, you know, you're the director, you're always in control. No. Did financing find you, or did you find financing? Both. Okay. Uh, yeah, both. You have to go out. You have to meet with meet people, go to networking events, uh, talk to people. Uh, I mean, you just I mean, it, 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 and you have to really know that you have to really know that what you're doing has enough value that somebody can so give you money to your project. You have, I mean, and the money is out there. Is is out there? Yeah. So when you say you lose control. What is it 
what is your uh, what is it that is still your project once you get money? Well, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, when we did like we did my first love, only person actors that I hired for my first love, I didn't hire no crew but my DP, which is my DP was he was my DP for. Now I did have control over the sound. Who's gonna shoot it? In all of my films, like because I work with uh, Adam, this DP named Adam Lee. I work with him on Black Coffee. Uh, however, however, when I was shooting my earlier films, I suggested to uh, Brett. I was like, I want Ricardo to shoot the film. He's like, No, I'm not gonna get Ricardo to shoot because Ricardo he has he, he has, he just never worked with that, that type of budget before. Because again, he's been doing films for as a DP to two thousand dollars. So they want they, they, this production company they want to entrust them with. Uh, a film for two hundred fifty thousand dollars, or a film for one hundred fifty thousand, when you've just been shooting for a thousand on a film. So I was like, okay. So I went out and I looked for DPs, and I looked for DPs. You know what I'm saying? And I just went on the internet. I was doing some searching, doing some searching. I'm like, you know, but I knew what I was looking for in a DP. This type of style I was looking for in a DP. And when I saw Adam, I was like, okay, this is the guy. And Adam never shot a feature film. That was his first feature film. Well, how did they accept someone because it, and because one who done some but low budget? Okay, so the thing, the difference between Adam and Ricardo is that Adam has he done a lot of again he done a lot of music videos, he did a lot of commercials, so he had that behind him. And so when I sent the demo rail to his uh, to Brett, Brett was like, "Cool, let's let's, let's hire Adam." So when I work with Adam on, on Black Coffee, everything else is like, okay, I have to have Adam with me. And Brett, because again, Brett produced everything itself, no regrets. He was like, oh, that's cool, that's, that's your guy, you know? Uh, so I had that control, but other than that, every, everybody else, I, I didn't do any, I didn't do any of the hiring. Now, for- So no casting, no crew? No casting. You give them the film and you're like, <laughs> no casting. Who decides what you have control over and what you don't? It's just like a mutual decision. Ooh, ooh. Like, you know, as far as you hired a director of photography, or who gave you the decision that, okay, I'll let you cast, or I'll let you decide who's the, you know, DP? So the question is who's, who's going to decide who you hire or who you not hire? Right. The, the producers. I mean, the executive producers. So Whoever's they just gonna, kind of be like, okay, we'll let you do that, yeah. and then they'll see if they like who you decide. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, yeah. They, like they're gonna like we just did a uh, couples night, uh, and we screened last night with Tony Rock. Uh, I, mean, I didn't do any other hiring for that. Like, not me as far as the cast. I mean, I, I just when it comes to cast, I, they just send me a list and say, this is who we have. <laughs> have you ever been, been in a, like in a situation where you're kind of out of control and you've been satisfied with the project or you've been dissatisfied and you wish you would have had more control? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. What, what happens when you don't like an actor? Like, what happens then? Well, you uh, you really don't know if you don't <laughs> click. I'm telling you. This is this is reality. Is that there are certain actors that you're going to click with, and even when I'm just just keep it real. Like when we shot Couples Night, uh, there are certain actors on there that I just didn't click with at all. And I'm like, damn, is it me? Like <laughs> I had to know. You know, I was like, is it me? I mean, you just there are certain people you just not going to click with, and so you know you have to go back again. You have to go to the greats and listen to what the greats are saying. I Meaning the greats are people like Mars Corsese, people like that. Just listen to their words. So I went back and I just listened to their interviews and how they deal with actors, and they all said the same thing. You know, Mars Corsese is like, you know, they're actors. You just not gonna, you all just not gonna have chemistry. I'm like, okay, it's, it's just not me. But they're, you know, but you're not gonna know that until like Brett said something. We were we screened at like the Pan African, and he was on a panel, and this was last week. And the question came up, the same question came up, and he said that as an executive producer, and if I'm, I'm you know, if Brett brings the money to the table, he said, I know that there are actors who are going to be difficult to work with, but if that actor is going to give me a return back or give me, you know, on my investment, I, even though I know that actor is going to be difficult to work with, I'm still going to hire that actor because it's all about me as an executive producer getting that money back. 
you know, but there are actors that I work with. May, overall, I've worked with some amazing actors, like amazing actors like Gabriel Dennis and Darren Henson, and like amazing to work with. Some actors I work with, like, God, I can't wait this day's over. Man. <laughs> Monica Cajon, I mean, she's amazing to work with. Brian White, amazing. But some, some actors are like, so when you call those agents to get those actors, the agent will give you that person's budget. Like for instance, I have no money, okay? And so I call and say, oh, I want um, um, uh, actor so-and-so to star in my feature film. And they come back and say, well, he wants $30,000 or who, who, who does the budget? I mean, how do you know what you'll be paying them? Okay, and, I, and this is uh, definitely a very uh, important question because what's going to happen is that you may want to hire a casting director who's going to, who has already got contact with the agents, you know, their agents. Um, but again, casting directors are going to want to get paid something up front. Um, but what I did was, I also want to build, like I, you know, the, the only reason Black Coffee got off the ground is because of, of relationships. The only reason, I, mean, I didn't go through the agents. The only time I went through the agents is when it was time to officially submit an offer over. And keep in mind, even as a producer of the project, if it's your project, no matter who the actor is, you can definitely submit an offer to the, to the, to the actor through that agent. So all you have to do is just pick up the phone or send them an email and say, hey, tell them who you are, and say, you know, I'm so-and-so and so-and-so, uh, I have this project and I want to submit an offer over to one of your clients. So the offer is basically saying, you know, you want to put in there and say, uh, of course, who the client is, how much their day rate is going to be. Again, if it's sad, it's $125 a day. It's totally up to them whether they want to accept that or not. Uh, where you, What city you want to shoot at, if you want to do a first class flight, they have to fly out, it's going to be first class. Uh, what hotel they're going to stay at and their day rate um, and the, 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 the length of time that you need to act through their working days. So those are some of the things that you're going to have in the offer letter. So you're going to have, again, you're going to have the day rate, how much you're going to pay them, what city that you are going to uh, be shooting in, if it's not their home city or the city that they live in, that if you're going to flat them out, if you're gonna fly my first class, uh, ground you want to provide ground transportation, which they all gonna want, uh, at least a three-star hotel, uh, a per diem, put the per diem in there as well, and you send that over to the uh, to the agent. The agent will look at that, and they may say, okay, they may call you up, and if the offer is good, they they want to call you up. They're gonna respond because they you know that's how they get paid. They're gonna respond. And so they make, uh, they're going to say, okay, let me, they want to want to know, first question is, do you already have the budget in place? And just be completely honest with them. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have the budget, say, no, I don't have the budget. Uh, and many of them are going to say, well, we can, I don't want to uh, attach my act or my talent to a project if the budget's not in place because if you can't get the budget in place, the act will make you lose some value. You know, if you can't find money with the actors now. So the agent, so once you send an offer to the agent, you know, uh, make sure that, you know, you can, you know, uh, they may, if the budget is already in place, they're gonna take you seriously. But then they're gonna wanna know who's gonna direct the project. Uh, you know, uh, they'll ask you those type of questions as far as it is the budget in escrow. And they wanna need proof of all of these type of things. So with, um, with the actor, well, they have this. I'm, I'm just. I don't know. Also, they'll, I'm they'll sorry. Have, okay. One see. of the things you also have to put in that offer letter is uh, is once you once they're on set, uh, uh, trailers. I, you know, you want to make sure that they have trailers as well. Yeah. So, but, well, they have like with the script with in rehearsals. So if if they um like for instance they accept the offer. How long do they have to look at that script to know it? Or are you budgeting in, okay, they'll be rehearsing for six days and we'll shoot for 12 days? How does that work? Okay, so it's not like a play. So I know with a play, you have to know all the lines. So the way actors work is that they first they read the screenplay, and once they read the screenplay, they know whether they want to do it or not. Is it pass or is oh, I'm going to do it? So if they decide to do your do the script right, 
So once you, you know, you may not be able to, like if it's a low budget, you may not be able to afford rehearsal because if you have rehearsal, then they want to get paid for that rehearsal time. So if you can't afford to do rehearsals, you know, um, so what's going to happen is with the day that every day that you shoot, you're going to have what is called a, a, a call sheet or which on the call sheet will have different days because you're not going to shoot. The films are not shot in sequence. It's they all out of order. So you're going to have, uh, which is a producer, or what, what, they're going to break everything down for you, the call sheet for you, or which, which as a matter of fact, your first day did. And those are the same friends, if you're shooting three scenes for that particular, on that particular day, what the actors, they all do this. They don't even concern themselves with any of the other script. They concern themselves with, for that night, with those three scenes, they're going to shoot for that following day. So when they come in that next day, they're going to, so every night, a call sheet will go out. That letting them know the scenes they're gonna shoot before that far that morning. So when they get on set, they're expecting to shoot uh, this thing, and that's how they study their script. That's how they study. So when you come in and they change stuff has changed around, they get frustrated. Right. Right. 